afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on in to the Brass Ring Media Podcast, the free edition of our show this week. It is Thursday, August 31st, 2023. I'm Zach Haydorn. That is Tyler Sage. Thank you to everybody who's uh, joining us live. Uh, we certainly appreciate you giving us a shot. It's a uh, man. Tyler, it's already been a week since uh, since Brass Ring Media became a thing, and um, man, it's been it's been really fun. It's been really fun. We've got some really good feedback. Uh, we've had a lot of activity um, on our uh, Discord channel. That's been an absolute blast. And so, um, if you're out there wondering, you're listening to this, going, "Hey, should we should we join?" You definitely should. Give us a shot. Uh, Four dollars. On Patreon, just search Brass Ring Media, and you will find us, and you get a bonus edition of this show, tons of written content, post-pay-per-view, roundtable shows, um, and man, anything in be- and everything in between. My favorite part so far has been that, been the Discord channel. Uh, mm-hmm. That thing's been so fun, talking everything from wrestling to radio shows to, uh, man, what the heck was going on in the in the uh, chat the other day? Was it a I think it's like something on Big Brother, maybe I forget. But anyway, probably it, in, in yeah, in the non wrestling service. Yes, yeah, yes, was, that that one's fun. I'll be talking about Starfield that's coming out this week, and it's got like uh, it's a video game. So you know, I'll tease everyone there. But that that'll be in the Discord because there's already a discourse that feels very much like WWE versus AEW <laughs> and liking or not liking it. So you know, everything comes back. Everything is pro wrestling in the end, right? I think we would all agree with that. So um, very fun. And yes, and I'll have a column up hopefully this evening. It'll be a Patreon exclusive, so my first one there. And just to tease it here, it's called the... uh, I'll see if I can fit a better name for a wrestling thing, but it's a Tyler's Contrarian Corner. And I'm going (laughs) to debate club something I may or may not believe from time to time and do the debate club where where you get the argument that's a little tougher to make and try and spin it, you know, a zag, if you will. You know, you know, you... You know, Zach, you know, especially I love to be a little bit of a contrarian when possible. So love that'll be it. fun. I, and uh, you'll have to subscribe to see what that's about. But I'm excited about the the piece I'm, I'm working on. That right now, so. is going to be awesome. Can't wait to read that. But you subscribe, you know, subscribe. Patreon. Um, and once again, just search Brass Ring Media on Patreon and you will find us real easy. Um, and we would love to have a shot to earn your business on a monthly uh, on a monthly basis. It'd be great. And I think you'll get a lot of value as well. Um, okay, we got a lot to get to here on the free portion of our show. It's going to be AEW heavy, given the circumstances of the week and given that last night was AEW Dynamite. Tyler, let's start with Dynamite. Um, and, I mean, I feel like we'll be able to weave the Dynamite conversation in with, you know, an all-out preview. Um, but I want to start broadly with Dynamite. I was in the building last night. It's in my backyard over here, about 40 minutes West. And I was pretty taken aback by the entire experience of, of, of watching AW Dynamite. Um, you know, here four years after, you know, the the first the first dynamite nearly. Um this audience was, I mean, significantly smaller, probably 70% smaller mm-hmm. than what I'm used to. Um this audience was had no energy at all. Um, the audience was flat. The audience was not invested in anything that really anything that they were that they were doing out there. Um, and I was sitting for most of the show, just kind of wondering, like, what you know, what does what would this crowd want to see right now? And Man, I didn't have a good answer for that. Like, I was like, man, if, if, if Steve Austin trots out right now, yeah, there's going to be a big pop. But, like, I mean, I don't – you know, I just get yeah. the sense that the audience is – or last night anyway, is, you know, almost – I don't want to, like, over-dramatize this, but, like, just tapping out a bit, going like, all right, hey, I'm gonna, I need to pump the brakes here for a second. Like, this is cool and all, and the double clothesline thing is funny, and it's you know it's funny for somebody to do a kangaroo kick, and you know all that stuff's funny, but there's not a deep investment in the product, and you can just tell just by by looking at it. You know, John Moxley walks out. That was the first thing that really blew my mind was Moxley walks out. He's this he's a he's a heel guy, and there's nobody there that's reacting to him that way. Zero, 
nobody is reacting. Even when he flips off the audience, like it's just not happening. He's people were just, they love seeing that guy. And there didn't seem to be any interest in Moxley's part, trying to flip that reaction. It didn't seem like even if he tried that the audience would buy it anyway. So it was this really weird, like push pull dichotomy between the product and the audience. The Adam Cole segment was, was, was similar to that. Um, You know, the, the Cole walks out and it's just kind of like, oh man, I lost the, lost the big match. I guess I'll, I guess I'll, you know, I'll get, get it next time. And it's like, Mm -hmm. people like didn't resonate with that message at all. I don't think that's the type of, you know, baby face Adam Cole they want, they want to see. So, you know, I don't know how it came across on TV. I haven't watched it back yet. So I'll kind of lean on you for that. But I mean, did it, did the same type of sentiment kind of, bleed through the tv or is it more of just you know being in the building type thing and, and being used to a raucous crowd of ten thousand as opposed to you know 2800 or whatever they had yeah no i mean i certainly agree and i, I think it tracks similarly to a lot of recent dynamites where a the sound mixing is poor i think that's always been a trait of AEW and in the crowd uh getting responded but uh yeah i mean it, it seemed like a lot of dynamites in the last couple weeks the last the dynamite i was at in person recently was it's like early august i think i mean it's kind of bad i don't even remember but it was felt the same as you're describing there as you know it was the second time it was in my town and it's you know the 75th time they've been to chicago and if you juxtapose you know the uk show that's the first time they've been there versus literally the you know, probably the 75th time, but besides Daly's Place, Chicago is by far the number two market based on dates. And, you know, you are a consumer, right, of that market. Like, you know, uh, are you, like, amped? I mean, you probably are. It's there, but, like, you know, to do Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday is, like, a lot. And the, the product is not offering much in way of, you know, I think Saturday might be more compelling just to be, like, well, I have the card, so we'll see what they do Saturday. Maybe as like a last ditch effort to sell like a match, there might be a reveal that'd be fun, um, and that thing. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a just two things, right? It's the market is oversaturated. Um, I don't think the town has been killed per se, but pretty almost, damn close, almost. And it, it's you know it needs to be like six months probably before they come back to spark it up, and you get post punk. We'll see, um, and. All that, plus the product. I mean, geez, I mean, before we started, you know, I know they laid out a lot of the matches last night that we didn't know, but I'm just looking at the card on the Wikipedia page, and it's like, oh, my God, like, this is, like, I think I know what the main event is, but it's like, there's some, it's like not even a very good dynamite on on some of these matches. Some of these matches feel like, you know, Commander versus John Moxley, like, thrown together at the last minute sort of stuff. And, like, you know. I love Shane Taylor. He's one of my favorite wrestlers in, in person. I think he's like one of the best guys ever. But, you know, he hasn't been established on TV at all. And you have him and Samoa Joe is like, you know, opening that show on Saturday just to, or on Sunday, which just tells you where it is. So, yeah, it's just a confluence of all that stuff coming together. And this is, uh, you know, we'll see if it, if it peaks again. But this feels like a low watermark. For AEW in terms of fan interest on the product that's coming in the next week and all the backstage stuff happening at the same time. How did so what did you think of the 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 follow-up to what was the main event at all in? Because I I think one of the most disastrous parts of this show was not framing all in as this huge thing and following it up with you know with, with, with angles coming out of it to kind of ride the wave of that momentum. Like I think about, you know, like, like, like a big WrestleMania moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's just Steve Austin winning the, the, the the championship at WrestleMania 14. Like there's no way, there's no way that, Steve Austin, after winning the title at WrestleMania 14, is not stuck, you know, on the show on Raw the next day. 
absolutely no way that 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 would happen because you you want to take advantage of that. And here you had, you know, the biggest audience ever, a ton of momentum for MJF and for um, for Adam Cole. And it's the hottest act. It's your main event of your biggest show. And not only is it uh, not only is MJF not there, but you stick Adam Cole like in that middle, you know, in that middle segment to really say nothing, like have like a little high school argument with, you know, the kingdom and Roderick Strong. So I was, I was really down on how they followed up that, that segment. I, I, I think like at the very least you have to have Cole and MJF together cut a promo to start the show to that talks about the big event. And if you want to have them bicker with the kingdom, okay, that's fine. It plays better if both of them are out there. Um, I, I still think it's a mistake, but at least it plays a little bit better. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't think they like Adam Cole, you know, after main eventing that show is in the same exact place as he was going in. And like now he's going to go have an ROH world title, ma- world tag title match at all out on pay-per-view with dark order. And it's like, boy, I mean, you really, I mean, you really stunted the growth of, 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 of that story, whatever it is, because you're tangling with some undercarters. So I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't like the thought process that went into that. And then I didn't, you know, I didn't like where they landed either. I thought they, they, they really sounded like bickering high school kids when, um, when they were uh, when they were out there in the ring, what what did you think, and, and what do you think of you know MJF and Cole against Dark Order uh, being on All Out rather than some kind of AEW World Title match? Yeah, well, that was you know my reference to pulling up the Wikipedia page and saying it's less than a good episode of Dynamite with some of the yeah. booking here because that's like good lord, that is like MJF and Cole in you know. I don't know, six months from now when neither of them are champions and you got to fill some time on TV. Uh, that's what that feels like. Um, so yes. that's, that's not ideal, but um, yeah, it's not, it's not good. It's, it's, you know, I don't know if any plans had changed with the, with the punk stuff. I don't think Tony Khan was going to take my free fantasy booking of seeing punk interrupting the main event and causing it to be a triple threat uh, for the world title, but that certainly would have been a better card and something to look forward to. Right. Yes. So I don't know if oh, that yeah. was, I don't know if that was on the table. I'm not saying it was. I think it's probably always the case because they like the story and they like where they're going. But, you know, I do not have the same. Um, I don't know what's what I'm looking for, but I don't, I don't I'm I do not think this is going to be the bloodline story where I just think everything's going to work out perfectly, even if it seems like we're, you know, hey, how can they keep extending the story? It seems like, hey, we're totally done with this story. And now is the story really going to be? Cole lost that and they both almost kind of cheated a couple times and he's going to turn on him during an ROH title match of some sort, or the kingdom is going to come in and that's when he's going to do it when he's not going to be for the title. This totally diminishes his character, this whole story in the end. And uh, yeah, it just, it feels like we were riding high, even coming to that main event. It was a good match and it's kind of confusing and nothing really happened. And you're like, Oh, that was weird that it's, this is pro wrestling. Like there should have been an angle here. That's like, the whole point of all these stories is to, you know, finish at the main event of these big shows, right? That's the basic outline of how pro, pro wrestling works. And uh, we didn't get it. And now this is happening. It's just like you, I am consistently losing faith in stories being able to be told and not just peter out, which is what this seems like it's going to be. And, you know, with the Dark Order, like, hey, hot, maybe that's not the initial plan, but like I at this point would rather than Hot Shot, Taven and Bennett get them a win last night and then they follow it up on Saturday or on Sunday and like do something there. At least that's like, okay, at least I'm intrigued what Cole's going to do. And that's at least something that's going to continue the story. That's like, you know, if Jimmy and Jay had a match, you know, three months ago and you're like, okay, they're back. And what are they doing? Is Roman going to help them? Whatever. Like that's not the main thing to tell the story about, but it's still something interesting and tells you how the whole unit is working together. And that just didn't happen. So, yeah, I think it's. I, I don't know. It's just I like not agree more. It, it's rough. Like, yeah, like, like. No, I, I just, I, I just, like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do what you did at, at all in, you know. I mean, you have to. I, I, I just. I don't know. I guess there's so many questions I have. It's like, why, 
you know, and I'll be in the media scrum on Sunday night. So I hope to ask uh, at least one of these, but I don't know how you don't have a world title match on this show. Like right now, there's not a world title match on the show outside of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the ring of honor world tag titles, like the, the AW tag titles aren't on the line. The women's titles not on the line. The men's world titles not on the line. I mean, in what world is that okay? Like, like, well, I don't know. I, I just don't, I mean, I don't, you know, so my, my thing is, it's like, okay, yeah, you can't, if Punk was in your plans to do a world title match. Okay. Well, you can't do that now. So now you still got to do something. You still like the, 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 the show needed to be, you know, okay. Like, you know, do Roderick strong. Do that match, you know. You know they talked about it last night. I'm going to take down MJF and do what you couldn't do. Okay, you know, hot shot, hot shot that, or you know, um, make a phone call to New Japan. Like, can we can we get Will Osprey again? Like, do that, do that match. And yeah, you're hot shotting it, but like you're giving the audience something at at at, at that point. And, and instead, you have barely like a Ring of Honor main event here. <laughs> with with MJF and uh and Cole against against Dark Order. Like it's just um I, I think it's just it's really it's really bad judgment. And I think it's it's I don't I, you know I think the fact that you know MJF and Adam Cole are the biggest stars in, in the company, I would I would say it at this point. It's certainly MJF. And when you're when you're asking people to shell out a second fifty dollars in the same in, in one week, like to me that you have to find something for your top star to do, to be on that show, to make people feel semi okay about, about dropping that, about, about dropping that money. And I think the fact that, you know, he's in this situation right now, not only is it bad for the momentum that you generate out of all in and, and, and just treating your main event guy like that. Um, I think it's going to, there's going to be some ill will with fans, uh, you know, and uh, you know, Tony's kind of held that off for a while, but you know, the sentiment that I got last night in the building and the sentiment that I kind of see, you know, on social media, which isn't a good barometer, but you know, it's not good. And I, and I think that this one, this will um, be something he needs to overcome, you know, in the next, you know, six, six to 12 months. I mean, this, this is a miss. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a miss to put it lightly. And it's, you know, one thing also that we even brought up that I'm kind of tired of hearing from Tony Khan in general is just the like excuse making of like, Oh, this person, like three people couldn't make it. So like the whole show got changed and, you know, like as an excuse, like, you know, again, like this is not a publicly traded company, but I think of Tony Khan, as a CEO on a, you know, quarterly investors call. And I, I don't think you would grade highly if you put it in that capacity of like having um, faith in his leadership of like, okay, a yeah, swerve couldn't make it. Kenny could make it. And I think there's one other person that he mentioned specifically, Soraya. but like, you know, Soraya. So like, you know, yes. What, what did you lose? Like, was Kenny going to have a match? Probably not. Like, what was he going to do? Have a backstage interview segment? Was Swerve Swerve doesn't have a match on Sunday. What was he going to do? And Soraya was probably going to have a maybe an in ring. Like, yeah, I won, but like, is any of that making last night's show better? Probably not in the way that AEW does things. And then to like say like, okay, you put Moxley and Commander on. That was probably one of the best parts of the show. Like, it didn't really lead to anything, but hey, it's a fun little match. And Commander mm-hmm. ran the ropes, and yeah, everybody had a great time, right? So, just like that in general, I'm, I'm is like systemic of. Hey, we've made like a bunch of bad decisions, but oh, like two people are injured right now. So really that's the cause of all our problems is is I think the internal mindset of Tony Khan and I guess people in his inner circle of like, hey, we have some tailwinds we're fighting, but you know, really all a lot of those tailwinds, in my opinion, are made by decisions like this of going back to back and not running a tight ship in the back and all that sort of stuff. So that's just like a microcosm of it, but it's a annoyance for me and I think it you know, supersedes everything else that they're doing. Yeah. I don't buy it really either. I mean, like I, yeah. you know, I mean, I get that people weren't available, you know, I, I, I get that, but mm-hmm. you're, I mean, you know, look, I want everybody to be healthy and I, you know, and I, you know, obviously I don't want people traveling during a hurricane or whatever, you know, like that's, you know, 
of, of, of course. But, you know, from a fan perspective, if you're asking me to throw down $50 on Sunday, you, you have to, like, it can't be, oh, it's just, just spend your $50 and we, we, we couldn't get you what you wanted or what, what's good enough because of this, this, and this it's, it's no, you, you, you try to come up with something better. You try to, you know, you know, do a better, some kind of better angle with, with Adam Cole in particular, like he was there, he was there. And, you know, like pull the trigger on, on, on Roger Strong beating him up. And then you got a, you know, a decent sized singles match for, for the pay-per-view or, you know, there's, there's a lot of different, you know, you know, different ways you could have gone to overcome some of this, not fully like, yeah, you can't, you know, you can't overcome for not having CM Punk on the show. Like, you, you probably can't get there, but you can put your, a, a good faith effort instead of, well, well, you know, just, 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 just nothing. Um, Tracy with a comment here. What do you th- think Tony is thinking right now? It's a good question, Tracy. Um, Tyler, I'll throw to you on that first. Good question. And, and Tracy, thanks for being part of the show. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's hard. I, I try and get in the brain of Tony Khan and, and give my analysis, you know, from time to time. And I don't know. It seems like, again, I think it was a couple weeks ago I said, like, my guess is that, you know, the buy rate for this show before we saw the card was going to be lower than last year's all out. But and we've even seen this in the conference call today. I've only read the synopsis. I, I haven't listened to it yet. But you know, when asked a question of like, hey, is this a good idea? The the answer is a non-answer and saying like, oh, yeah, we did $10 million gate at all in. So, we're you know, I think we're I think we know what we're doing. Like that sort of response is is happening. Right. So uh, I think his argument is going to be, hey, we had a lower buy rate, but we had more buy rates between the two shows. Right. So it just seems like he's thinking for dollar signs and in the moment. And, you know, the way he books, it's literally show to show it seems like it's mm-hmm. it's like Vince McMahon old critique of like except the of you know I mean Tony Khan is icing people out people are on the show a couple weeks and then, then disappear and uh you know the people that he doesn't that he does focus on the show getting fights backstage and then he has to pivot to other people so you know I guess that's because those people that aren't on the show aren't probably backstage either because they're not being used but um yeah I I honestly don't know it seems like flying by the seat of his pants and trying to get that next TV deal and doing everything he can to make money and make the company successful before then in a intermediate and short-term view, not a long-term view to be, to be nice, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm with, uh, with Delta newsman here. Uh, Delta, thanks for, for joining the show. There are a few four letter words in there. I'm sure. Yeah. To me, that's where I, I think he's at a little bit. I think he's, you know, I mean, he, he, he's plugged in, you know, he's plugged into what people are saying. And last night, you know, he came out in between um, Dynamite and Rampage and it was a mixed reaction at best, you know, for him. Um, a person seven or eight seats down from me just get up, got up and just said, F you, Tony. Like, <laughs> like it was not like, you know, in two years ago, you know, at a show in the same building. I'm not two years ago. Yeah, yeah, two years ago, 2021. It was like polar opposite type mm-hmm. feeling for him. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting. And so, yeah, I think he feels that. I think he is, you know, I, I think he does play, you know, the victim a little bit too much where it's like, I mean, every every wrestling company has injuries, you know? I mean, you're it's a pro wrestling company. So you're going to be dealing with people that are that are not there. You know, um, you have, you have to be able to work around that. You have to be able to like, okay, yeah, maybe we don't, we don't want a hot shot, uh, you know, the kingdom and, and coal, but we need to put something on this show that matters. So let's do the angle and let's just get to it. And then we'll figure, you know, we'll figure it out. And, you know, you can't operate that way all the time, but like in a situation like this one where, to your own accord, you have to build a whole pay-per-view in six days. You know, yeah, you probably have to play some cards that maybe you don't, maybe you don't want to play. What about, uh, what did you think of um, the, so another match uh, Sunday at all out that got made this week 
Uh, and if you blinked, you missed it. Um, <laughs> FTR and the Young Bucks against Bullet Club Gold, eight man tag. Um, pretty, I mean, paint by numbers, but Tyler, to me, you you know, the FTR and the Young Bucks are teaming up. Like that should be a, that should be a pretty big deal after the trilogy that they that they had. Um, you know, I, I I don't you know where's their why you know where's the in ring segment where like you know instead we got like a thirty second video package that was taped right after All In and that's pretty much it. Like if you went to the bathroom or you went up to mm-hmm. crack a beer, like you missed it. <laughs> and you know I I just. I think it'll be a good match. I think it'll be an action-packed match. There's just too much talent in there for it not to be. Um, but this is a match that, you know, the last time those four teamed up, it was on an episode of Dynamite. So, you know, this is not, you know, pay-per-view level stuff for me. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like it, that should be the collision main event to lead yes. to something, you know, a at least Matt and Nick versus, you know, Juice and – Jay White, like that, that's more compelling to me than an eight man tag. And, uh, you know, or, you know, if they win, they get a title shot and, you know, they're going to win. So it's, you know, you know, we've seen a long form version of that. So I guess you don't want to repeat that. But at this point, like, I'd rather see repeat matches than this. So, um, you know, I'd rather see Jay White and mm-hmm. Juice get another shot. And I mean, that was a great match last time they took on FTR. So, yeah, just, yeah, just that right. capacity. Right. And yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm really curious, like, you know, Sean already said here in the comments he's not buying the show. I'm curious, like, who is buying the show? Like, you and I are, thanks, you know, to, in part to the, the our great patrons that we're going to do a post show about it. Yes. But I'm not going to lie to you. Like, if we were doing this, like, I'd be hard-pressed to be buying this. And I love, I've, I've bought every AEW pay-per-view without a second thought. Like, I've always thought, like, oh, yeah, this is totally worth 50 bucks. They're always great. And, you know, I, I love the camaraderie of watching with people and all that sort of stuff and like this is the first time and it's like a zero out of ten on my interest level in this show like it, it needs a i mean at this point you should do like a gimmick of not <laughs> not the royal rumble but like it needs like a gimmick and it's not my uh article i was talking about but you know if you're gonna do these two in a row like one of these might just have to be like a gimmick pay-per-view where you get a bunch of title shots at arthur ash as a result of this or whatever but like um man it's it's rough like so, yeah go ahead one of the things that i thought on that note was if you're doing this tournament if you've got nothing to put on this show and you're doing this like big tournament to crown you know uh the next number one contender like mm-hmm. do all the matches on the show like yeah. just do them like have it like have the show be about that you know and have really great matches and like you know i don't know you know it's not a, it's not a great idea but at least there's like some kind of hook, you know, at, at, at that point. Um, mm-hmm. But to your point, you're, you're right. Like make you ha- yeah do something to, 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 to create some kind of entry here. Yeah. Or like Tony loves tournaments, like just have a whole pay-per-view. Of, it's a tournament, you know, not King of the ring. Yeah. Or what you're describing is like night of challengers instead of night of champions, right? Like everyone <laughs> who wins is the number one contender, which I think would be like well, yeah. very like impacty thing to do, <laughs> like a impact 2008 thing to do, not current day impact, but yeah. So, well, yeah, yeah. I, I did say it was a good but yeah. idea, but like, but yeah, you know, yeah. you definitely know not. I mean. Like we're, we're grasping at straws here. So, yes, yes. Um, so who do you think wins this match? I didn't even ask you about the first one, MJF against the Dark Order, because, you know, we know what's going to happen there. But, like, yeah. this one, I mean, do you give Bullet Club Gold something? Is there dissension between, you know, the Young Bucks and FTR? Or is this like, you know, the baby faces go over and, uh, you know, finally they respect each other and handshake in the ring? I don't know. I, I don't I don't really think there's, like, it matters either way, right? Like, is there going to be follow-up on Wednesday? Probably not, right? Like, there was a follow-up on the main event of the biggest show, quote-unquote, of all time, right? So, that makes me feel less inclined. But yeah, I guess, you know, Bullet Club Gold, because I think dissension between the two teams makes... There's more money in that than them being begrudgingly, you know, simpatico. So, I will say, you know, Jay White pins cash or something. We'll get, we'll get a payback for cash. He got the pin on Sunday, so now he'll get pinned uh, on the next pay-per-view. Yeah, I mean I, that's what I think. I mean I don't. I, I think Bull Club Gold wins, and 
you know, you, you, I guess, plant the seeds for just more dissension and another match down the road, but it's all not very compelling. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I think the match will be good, you know, but um, the outcome is just not, just not compelling. And I want to keep that, that trend going here because this gets to a broader point. So you kind of know what's going to happen in, with FTR or with uh, MJF and Cole here. The outcome is really, it doesn't, it essentially doesn't matter because as you said, are they going to follow up on it? Hopefully yes, but you know, track record says no. Mm-hmm. Takeshita, Kanosuke Takeshita against Kenny Omega singles match. One of the few that are on the show, or at least right now. Um <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Omega is having a singles match on pay-per-view and you know, we didn't hear from him at all. And all we got from Takeshita was like a little backstage um, kind of <laughs> class that Don Callis put on. I, you know, I like this. I like this match a lot. I think Takeshita mm-hmm. and Callis have been good, a good heel act for, for AEW. Um and I like that he's working with with Kenny Omega. Like I think that's going to be a heck of a, a heck of a damn match. But you know, when you're looking at the show and you're going, "Hey, what's what can main event?" I mean, Kenny Omega, you can always drop him in the main event, but this has not been framed as like a big deal, uh, especially last night. Um, so, I mean, from a wrestling perspective and an in ring perspective, I'm very much looking forward to this, and I think it's I think this is the match of the night, um, and probably by a wide margin. But once again, you know, when you don't have the babyface out there talking stakes and talking about what it means to to win and, and finally putting an end to this Don Callis nonsense, it's like, okay, well, no wonder the audience doesn't care. And and I don't I don't think they will be very invested outside of, hey, we want to see a cool match right now. That's the that's the sense that I get on this. And that's why I wouldn't put it in the main event on, on Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, I think that argument's correct, but also it's just the way Tony Khan books, right? For, you know, maybe there's a story with the world title. Maybe there's a story between, you know, in another singles match. Maybe there's a, a story with a, a feud, a grudge match of sorts. But most of it is just like, hey, if you have 11 matches on a pay-per-view card, a lot of them have been just like, oh, yeah, that'd be really cool if these two wrestled. And then you kind of tell a story two weeks before, like essentially every Jericho feud has been that. And, you know, I just, I mean, all these on here are, especially last week too, with all in, just like, yes, it's really cool matches on paper. Like, yeah, Jericho in Osprey, if you would have told me that five years ago or, you know, him at the end of WWE, like, is this going to happen? Probably not. So to see it live is very cool. And I think is Tony Khan's mindset, but, you know, and they said they salvaged that build. Um, more so than most, but it's just the, the style of booking is, Hey, these are really cool on paper. People are going to buy it for this. And the, the storytelling is not as important as the, the matchmaking. And, uh, you know, if I was compelled by, you know, the Eddie Kingston match, like if there was a story there more so than there is, you know, the orange Cassidy, John Moxley, like there's some, some in-ring storytelling there, but nothing for my, you know, verbal narrative whatsoever between these two. And I think that could be sold really well. It's not the sexiest match on paper, but you could sell it as Cassidy bled and went toe to toe with a guy like Moxley. And that's like changing his character and defending this belt. That means more than anything to him. I mean, you don't get anything like that. It's just like, Oh yeah, this will be a good match. Right. And that is the build for a vast majority of AEW matches. And uh, it's really a long-term issue. That's really coming home to roost right now because there are not a ton of, oh, my God, Brian Daniels is taking on Y, and, oh, my God, Kenny Omega is taking on X, and, oh, my God, CM Punk's going to be taking on Z, right? It's just like a card built on that. And I'm curious, because I agree, it probably should have made an event based on that, but, you know, what do you made event this show, um, if, if not that? Like, it certainly cannot be the Dark Order main eventing a show here. No. I I mean, I think, you, I think last – Night tells me that they're going to do Orange Cassidy and, and Moxley as the main event. I think. I mean, I really I mean, think. I, I mean, I I think <laughs> that like, I almost think that the match is better off 
like happening in the main event without the international title on the line because like yeah. the international title is a mid card, if that title. And mm-hmm. I think honestly, like Orange Cassidy versus John Moxley is a big match, and like the title is like is weighing it down because of because of what <laughs> you know because of what the title is and what it's you know what it means, which is nothing. Yeah, um, like Cassidy should have already lost that title, and he could like this would be like a hey he could take on a, a heel, be the first can, first guy to go up against a heel champion once they win it, like sort of match, which would feel more important. Yeah, or to like you know yeah just you know. Have him drop the title and just do this match. Uh, to me, uh, uh, you know, and, and you could even say it, it could be almost the same story because the story that they're going in here with is, hey, this like not only has this title run changed me, but like that match, the match at the Stadium Stampede changed Orange Cassidy, and now he's gonna he's he's tough enough and strong enough he's gonna beat John Moxley. Like you could tell that same story if he didn't have the title. Like he doesn't need that title to tell that. And I think again, it's such a low card title that's meaningless that it, it doesn't do the match any favors when you think about it made of any, because on the surface, like this, that match is like, if that was like fourth from the top, you know, mm-hmm. uh, at all out, like, I think that's a solid match. I think it's like a solid mm-hmm. fourth from the top match um, with the title or without, I mean, those are two big names in a W uh, it, it's fresh. We haven't seen them like wrestle a singles match before. I don't think it's it, definitely not on pay-per-view. So, you know, I can get behind that. But, like, it's like that pay-per-view. It's like a UFC pay-per-view where you lose, like, the top two fights on the mm-hmm. show. And now the third fight is, like, masquerading around in the main event. It's like, mm-hmm. you're you're screwed. I mean, you're not, you know, that's not a good scenario. <laughs> the difference is yeah. this is written. You know, you don't have to write your show <laughs> this way. So yeah. it's, 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 it's just, it's, um, so for as good, so, and, and I say that because, like, last night in the building, that was the most over stuff, without question. Like, mm. John Moxley is is blurry and fuzzy in terms of, like, how what people will or won't do, as I mentioned at the top. Uh, but Orange Cassidy was, you know, the most over guy on the show that came out there yesterday. Eddie Kingston as, like, a, as like a close second. Um, so there's something there. And I think yesterday it was cool seeing Orange Cassidy talk. It was a little weird to hear him you know, talk that way about being international champion of all things. Like, it's just like, okay, come on, man. Like there's, there's two other titles you should want <laughs> instead of that one. Yeah. Um, but you know, all things considered, I think it, it, it was fine, but you know, it, it, it it's not, it's not a main event and it might, and it, I think, I really think it might end up being given the attention that it was given. Um, last week as a or last night as opposed to Omega and and Takeshita. Who do you think wins that match? Moxley and uh or excuse me, Takeshita and, and Omega. I didn't get your I didn't get your official prediction and pick on that. Yeah, I think Takeshita does. Um if you're gonna tell a longer ter- term story here, right? Because Callis doesn't have anyone else in his family to take up against. I mean Osprey kind of is, but he's not with the company yet. And unless he absorbs like a Jay White and and Juice sort of situation to his family or Jericho, then you kind of this is this doesn't feel like a compelling way to end the story of Callus screwing over Kenny. Like it feels like it'd be a step one of a three step process of finally getting one over on him and crushing his dreams and all that sort of stuff. So, but it's AEW, so maybe he'll just win and then we'll just move on and forget that Callus, you know, stabbed his friend in the back. And or his, you know, essentially his his wrestling son, and the only rebuttal that Kenny Omega gets is that he gets to beat his protege in a singles match, and that's the end of it. So we'll see. Both are possibilities. I haven't looked up the odds, but I would assume that Kenny is the betting favorite. But the story, to me, dictates him. You know, Callis helping Takesh to win via interference. There's another good reason not to have it be the main event, um, because you don't want the main event to end right. in that way. But but yeah, I would say Takesh to through devious means. I think I'll take I'll, I'll take Omega just because I, I I think they're gonna do it. I think they'll pull the trigger and, and want you know the pop and want the reaction you know on this mm-hmm. show given how given how weak it is. So I'll take that. Um, that shouldn't be how they book this. I mean I don't think you can give Omega his win 
and not put any words behind it beforehand. Like, you know, you got to see your baby face, put something on the table. You got to see him sympathetic, you, you know, in order to present the story, right? Like this is the wrong time for him to get that, get that win. So that's, I don't think they should do it, but I think they pull the trigger. What about uh, John Moxley against um, Orange Cassidy? There's not much to dissect for a bill perspective because they, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> the matches existed for like, you know, three minutes of, of, uh, of mm-hmm. AEW, you know, programming time. Um, but alas, that's what's going down. International championship. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you said, the belt weighs this down in lots of ways. And the, and the result also, because if the belt's not on the line, I think Cassidy gets a win here and Moxley is Teflon and he basically makes this guy into a, you know, lower mid card guy to a mid card guy. Now puts him up in the upper mid card. It can be, an occasional top guy and not that he's probably ever going to win the world title, but he can be legitimately in a singles match with a heel world champion. And it makes yes. a ton of sense. He's, he's like in that Darby zone of, you probably don't think he's going to win, but you can essentially book him in a match at every pay-per-view for the next two years, right. With a win over Moxley here, just to solidify that in the minds of the viewers. But does Moxley want to walk around with the international title? Is that something that he wants to do in the intermediate until he's, you know, world champion again in two years or whatever it's going to be? I don't know. Maybe. But, like, I don't want to be the guy after the guy with a, a title run like this either. Like, you know, I want a, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think who's, like, a heel that I would pick. You know, I want, like, Miro to win this from Cassidy and, like, see what happens there because it's so different and you won't ever see him on TV and whatever. But, like. I don't know if I'm Mox. I don't really want that title. If he was going to retire it, I think it'd be a win-win for everybody. And then he can retire the FTW title too while he's at it. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I, I bet also it's like if Cassie doesn't lose it here, like is he just going to have the belt for his whole career? Is that like his gimmick? Is that he just has this belt and never loses? So I think Moxley, I don't know. I would have Cassie win just to up him, up the card and, you know, but it's Moxley, it's a singles match. Like and so few people bear, get that honor to beat him in a singles match. So I guess I'll go with Moxley, and then we'll see what happens from there. But I'm I'm pretty torn. I'm torn too. I'll I mean I'll take Cassidy, and it's only because I don't think Moxley wants to touch that belt with a ten foot yeah. pole. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Like that's that's the reason. You know, I I, I don't think he should. You know, I I, I you know because like you said, beating John Moxley that that should be a thing at this point. It is a thing at this point. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't even know that, you know, that it's wrong for Cassidy to be a guy that gets a, that gets a win over, over him. I don't think that's because that doesn't feel out of place. Um, but it's, you know, it's so short notice. Like these guys, I think could have a long drawn out, you know, blood feud with one another. And I think it'd be really interesting to watch because they're totally different characters. And, uh, you know, so I hope they don't just, you know, rush it all, but that title's on the line, so I, I I think I think Cassidy Cassidy takes it. Um, okay, I'm looking at the card here. I mean, I'll be honest, man. Like I don't like all these other matches were pretty much made, you know. Yet yeah, last night you have Powerhouse Hobbs mm-hmm. versus Miro. I, I don't know that that's doing anything. That does, that's not doing anything for me personally. I mean, I think mm-hmm. you know in that match. You got to see something from from Miro, man. I mean, so that's I look at that and I'm like, okay, like Miro has got to step up, you know, and 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 play the part of like, you know, being a guy who cares about about the about the company that he's in. I just he's never around, and when he is around, it's very, very, very one note. Um, so I think this match means actually a lot for both these guys to go out there, and put on a show, put on a good match. Um, I would go with Miro here, um, but you know, I, I, I if, if I was Tony Khan and <laughs> Hobbs's camp was uh, politicking the other way, like I, you know, the door certainly would be open to, you know, to putting Hobbs over too. I don't, I don't, I think you just go with Miro because he's the more you know made guy at this point and and needs and needs a little kick in the butt to like to get to get going. Um, so for that reason, I'm putting them over, but, but I, both these guys need to show something. Yeah. Um, I think again, the problem with this card is that I don't think it really matters. Right. And not that, you know, 
every wrestling company goes through, you know, sp spots where it's like this, right? Um, and I think AEW is in that right now. The way they're booking is that, like, you know, whoever loses here might go up the card. It might be Miro versus MJF if he loses this match to Hobbs, and then Hobbs is going to be doing yeah. some. Hey, there's only you can only work with Luchasaurus, Miro, or Wardlow because you're in the big guy division, and I'm Tony Khan, and I can't figure out how to book any big guy against anyone smaller than themselves. So that's an annoyance of mine as well currently with the booking. But um, is that you know, like an ultra heavyweight division, and it's not really discussed. But also, you know, again, I don't, I never like the wins and losses on the screen, and that being like a ranking system, all that sort of stuff. But the wins do have to matter in certain things, especially for pay-per-view singles matches like this that aren't for a title. So I'd like to see something come out of this, but yeah, I mean, you'd think Miro, but he's been so underutilized and it's, you know, just Tony just not want to work with him for the reason he's not working with other people. And he's, he wasn't as, as huge a fan of him as he was of CM Punk. So that's cl not clouding his judgment like it is with Punk for, for being a backstage nuisance, et cetera. So we'll see, but um Again, I, I would probably go Miro, but I don't think it really matters for the overall trajectory of either guy. I think Miro will be on several um, vignettes and or squash matches in the next three or four weeks, and then Hobbs might disappear whether he wins or loses. So You said it, man, and that leads to my final point, <laughs> and then we will ride off to the sunset and uh, wrap up the free portion of the show and uh, head over and record our member-only version that will drop on Patreon a little bit later. If you're tuning in live to the show, we'd love to earn your business. Uh, Brass Ring Media on Patreon. Uh, we've got um, a members-only podcast and YouTube show that goes up right after this one on Thursdays. Brand uh, new and exclusive columns for members um, on our Substack newsletter page. Um, I've got some stuff up there now. Tyler's uh, going to drop some stuff um, later today or tomorrow. Uh, we will have post shows for pay per views this weekend and a host of other really cool benefits, including a hopping Discord world that has been really, really fun uh, for all of our members mm -hmm. to hang out in. Um, Twitter, and you know, it's only $4 Twitter. a month. And it's four dollars a month, folks. Like, yeah. um, again, we will do everything we can to make sure that you're happy spending four dollars with us, um, and we certainly appreciate it and appreciate the uh, the support. Um, so, Tyler, you said it multiple times. I said it multiple times. The results of these matches, this doesn't matter. That doesn't feel like it matters. I want to take this full circle because that. You could sense that in the building last night. Like, mm -hmm. I I'm tr I tried like all day to figure out a way to like how am I gonna like capture capture that feeling, and, and, and with words. And it's you know so much has changed with the audience reaction. Like, I think you know that party atmosphere that AEW had like early on. Um, it's just not there anymore. The you know the the what's over the most is the silly stuff like the the pops that got like the things that got the biggest pops were you know adam cole talking about his bff mjf it was the acclaimed you know doing the scissor thing with the new scissor belts um it, it it's that kind of stuff and it's like i looked around as that stuff is happening and and you know people are smiling about it and it's like I think it's just the wrong tone that you want to have, you know, with your core wrestling fans. And if Chicago, you know, is their home base and like the fans that are in that building are like the 3000 diehards that are going to be at all the shows. And that's the stuff that re that they're reacting to the most. I, I think you've got a really, really, you know, big problem on your hands long term to try to get credibility back with your company um, and I just want to get your take on, on that point, having said, oh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. So often, um, you know, how, 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 how can AEW, whether it's this weekend or and beyond, how can they, you know, turn the tide on that and, and, and generate a little, a little investment finally. Yeah. I mean, I think you answered it with the. You know, thing at the top, it, it's there's there's no serious stories being told by serious characters, right? I mean, the most we have is Moxley, 
and that's barely a story right now. MJF, Adam Cole, your two most popular individuals are in a funny haha story that could be serious with a turn or with a, a continuation of the story, but you know you're not going to get that with this show, right? So you, there's no stakes there in this at all because even if the kingdom come out and screw over Cole and MJF out of their titles, like does that feel like anything? They're just going to have a tag match, right? They're not. It's not anything that's going to be mono e mono, and you know, you might build to that for Arthur Ashe, but you know you have two or three weeks before that turns into anything. So the show doesn't do anything there. And um, yeah, it just, it, if you go up and down the card, you know, Kenny Omega potentially could be in that spot. He's been more serious on his return from suspension than he was as world champion. Callus, that is the same, you know, Jericho kind of doing the same thing over and over again. He's usually a character that's rather serious and doing things that you care about, but when you keep refreshing things over and over again with him, that that hurts as well. So it just, you know, like always, you need to pick, if you're Tony Khan, let's pick six characters, three on each show, that are dead serious characters that have, that know what they're, what they're going after, right? What is, you know, just treat it like you're writing a, a character in a novel, right? Like, what is, you know, this person's background? Why do they care what they're doing? Why are they doing that for that reason? And you can have characters, you can have scissor belts for a, a title that doesn't matter whatsoever. I think that's the perfect use for the trios belts is to yes. be like a funny haha group comes out or a spooky group has it, or you need to <laughs> revitalize, you know, if you want Sting to have some championship and you have Darby and Nick Wayne and Sting as those, that's what those are the perfect use for, right? But you want, you know, your women's champion to be able to wrestle, you want your men's champion to have someone that is going against him that does not that you know if he's a good guy that they're a bad guy etc like having some for the major important cornerstones of a company are the singles titles you pick two or three you care about and then one sort of tag title or secondary title and all those should be pretty cut and dry we have you know a, a pool of 12 to 15 people we really care about they're pretty serious people and we tell stories that are compelling enough to make me feel something when it's happening. Right. I mean, it sounds easy, but it's hard. Right. That That's why companies have and flow and stuff like that. But you know, on this card, I'd rather have Swerve Strickland taking on a, uh, you know, an orange Cassidy for the international title that feels like, you know, now it's hard to do, but Swerve just had a match and he lost and now he's taking it out on orange Cassidy. You could have set that up last night. At least I know, Hey, Cassidy might lose, but he might go up the card and sort you know, all this sort of stuff, right? Like, but those are two guys that I could have in this pool that I can always have matches with. And I know Swerve's a bad guy. I know Orange Cassidy's a good guy. And you can go from there and build a story out of that. And there's just none of that right now. Everyone's kind of flapping in the wind. If you look at All In, how many of those matches had good guy versus bad guy? Very few. I'm not even the most staunch, like, good guy, bad guy, like, old school person, but this happens when you have a bunch of, you know, when you have a bunch of both these guys type matches, even old school NXT, the good old days, it was at its best when Tommaso Ciampa was walking out to no music and people were calling him an asshole. His entire walk down the thing, that's when he was the most over. And, you know, you need characters like that one way or the other or over Johnny Gargano. Besides that, like everybody wanted all, they knew they loved both the guys, but there was a story and you knew where to jump in and all that sort of stuff. So, and the excuse of like, hey, we don't see him punk and he's an automatic cheer. Well, that wasn't working either because he was getting cheered in that building where you were at last night, but everyone else is getting booed. So like mm -hmm. even that, like you don't have any structure on who your good guy bad guy is. Sorry, I didn't mean to like go on a huge tangent here, but no, it's, it's good. Uh, stuff, it's frustrating. Man. It's just frustrating because you know, I think you and I both love AW, like the idea behind it. Always want a strong number two, but just like unforced error after unforced error after unforced error error. And like I don't necessarily think I'd be doing a better job than Tony Khan, but I, if I wasn't, I would have people around me helping me get to this thing and not be making the boneheaded decision to do this every year and have every all out feel like complete and utter garbage in day three of Wrestle Kingdom from a couple years ago where you're just a bunch of mixed tag <laughs> yes. matches. So yes. Well said, really well said. And uh, I think, I think, I think you're right. I mean, obviously I agree. I mean, it was, 
it was telling being in that building and it'll, uh, we'll, we'll be in the, you know, covering the show and the shows uh, and Starcast this weekend um, over at Brass Ring Media. So you can keep it locked there. Hopefully we'll have some exclusive videos and other content, but we will put a bow on the free version of the show um, and we will uh, head over to uh, the member side of things where we will take a look at WWE Payback. There's a WWE pay-per-view event this weekend, too. <laughs> it's complete madness. Thanks to everybody for joining the show. Um, if you want more, check us out on Patreon. $4 gets you access to all the content every single week. Um, just search Brass Ring Media on Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. To everybody who joined us, Tracy, Sean, uh, Delta, and everybody else who will listen to this after the fact, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll talk to you guys really soon. See ya.